Welcome to the next video in the evolution topic. This video is looking at life on earth.8.4.2c, point point identify data sources, gather, process, analyze, and present information from secondary sources to evaluate the impact of increased understanding of the fossil record on the development of ideas about the history of life on earth. So we need to evaluate the impact of increasing our understanding of the fossil record on the development of ideas. So this video is just going to give us a little bit of a background to get us started and then we'll take it a little bit further in class. So some methods used by paleontologists to determine past environments include the study of fossil pollens, spores, aquatic organisms and corals, as well as the analysis of the rock types present in sedimentary layers. So these studies of past environments in Australia have revealed that as changes occur, so too does the distribution and abundance of particular species. So you'll recall all the way back to the local ecosystem topic um, that distribution refers to where a particular species is found and the abundance refers to the number of individuals within that species. Okay, so changes that have occurred in Australia over time, which we will get more into as we move further through this topic, has led to changes in where different organisms, both plants and animals, are found and obviously how many of them are in particular areas. So what are some changes that have occurred in the Australian environment? So as we know, Australia has moved northward from its original position when it was combined in the supercontinent of Pangaea and then also in the smaller supercontinent of Gondwana. So as Australia has moved northward, for instance, the climate has changed from being cool and wet to being much drier and hotter. And we're noticing that now ourselves. Each year we seem to have much warmer and drier summers that lead into dry and, as we've seen this year, warmer winters as well. So that's been one thing that has been extremely noticeable. Uh, and as a result of this, because we have much less uh, water, moisture, rainforests have become restricted to small pockets of land around the country. And those plants that are able to withstand um, much drier and warmer conditions, such as grasses and woodlands, in particular our acacia and eucalypt or eucalyptus species, have become much more common all the way across most of the Australian continent. Okay, and as a whole, biodiversity across Australia has decreased. So biodiversity, we can look at the word, break it down, bio meaning living, diversity meaning multiple, numerous, lots of. So the number of different types of living organisms has decreased across Australia as a result of our movement north and therefore the change in our climate. So Early human activity may have contributed to some of these changes, such as the reduction of rainforests and the increase in the abundance of woodland forests because of their in, the introduction of fire. So we know that Aboriginal Australians use fire quite a lot in their farming. So they will set fire to a particular area of land in order to rejuvenate it, to get new growth happening. And what happened as a result of that is we uh, have led to the evolution of fire resistant plant species. So in general, biodiversity has decreased in Australia during this movement northward, and we can only expect more of this loss in genetic variation as human activities change the environment at a more rapid rate. So clearing forests for agriculture and the timber industry over the last few centuries combined with increases in greenhouse gases from the burning of fossil fuels has altered both species distribution and the overall climate patterns in a very short space of time. So let's have a look at a particular case study for this, which is the thylacine. So paleontological studies tracing the decline of species such as the thylacine, which is more commonly referred to as the Tasmanian tiger, have found a direct correlation between the demise of the thylacine and the disappearance of much of its natural habitat. So these organisms used to live in the rainforest areas of Tasmania, and as those rainforests have declined, unfortunately, so has the thylacine. So studies such as these on the thylacine are able to provide a warning to humans about the probable future effects of our activities on biodiversity in the future. So 
by looking backwards, we're able to give ourselves an idea of what's going to happen in the future if we keep following the same patterns. And that brings us to the end of this video. And thank you for watching.